It still feels pretty bad, you know. Not gonna lie, it still kind of does sting. Today we're talking about the Ryan Kessler trade, six years later, and analyzing all that came about from that little deal that was made a few years ago back when the Canucks were in a little bit of a worse situation. Now, I did make this video two years ago, back when the trade was only four years old. In the summer of 2018, I sat down and I made a video revisiting the Ryan Kessler trade, and I think I did a really good job explaining the trade tree and how things have worked out up to that point from that Ryan Kessler trade. Now, that's going to be updated a little bit here today, but mostly the reason we're talking about this here is because I thought it would be fun to take a little bit of a trip down memory lane and analyze who Kessler was for the Canucks, why he was so great, and what the Canucks eventually did when the trade rumors started to come up and eventually the trade did happen. Ryan Kessler was a guy who was really important for Vancouver Canucks history because up until Quinn Hughes, Kessler was the only Canucks prospect in a long time to play in the NHL immediately after getting drafted. Or at least, not immediately, but in the same year after getting drafted. Kessler did that after getting drafted by the Canucks in the 2003 NHL Entry Draft. He signed a contract, played with the Moose for 2003-2004, and then at the end of that season, made his Vancouver Canucks debut. Kessler was the last one to do it for a long time, until Quinn Hughes signed his contract and played with the Vancouver Canucks in his draft plus one year after playing with the Wolverines. But back to Kessler, though, the guy was an immediate force to be reckoned with, and eventually getting some playing time with guys like Trevor Linden on the Canucks and all this stuff, it really, really worked out in his favor, because Kessler eventually became a 40-goal, two-way beast for the Vancouver Canucks, a Selkie winner in his own respects, and a guy who was one of, if not the best, second-line centers in the entire league. Kessler had that reputation about him that if he was playing on any other team besides Vancouver in 2010, 2011, 2012, he would have been a first-line center. Playing for Team USA, Kessler was a very impactful figure, playing sometimes with Patrick Kane, playing sometimes with Zach Parise, playing as a very good shutdown two-way center. His best Vancouver Canucks years were highlighted with 75 and 73 point campaigns, and then in the playoffs when the Canucks went to the finals, Kessler had 19 points in 25 games. He also single-handedly pretty much won the second round series against Nashville. It's needless to say, but Ryan Kessler was one of the best centers the Vancouver Canucks had ever seen. So, as the team started to get worse and worse and worse as Kessler started getting older and older and older, you could definitely see how things could become a little bit rough to deal with. And it all came to an end in 2014, because Ryan Kessler was a guy who started entering the trade rumors. The rumors started circulating and people were reporting that Kessler was only really willing to accept a trade to three teams, the Chicago Blackhawks, the Anaheim Ducks, and the Pittsburgh Penguins. Kessler's goal was to win a championship, and he wanted to do that with the teams that were considered to be the best teams in the league and the teams that you could probably easily win a championship with at that time. Jim Benning was the new guy in town at this time frame as well. Mike Gillis had recently gotten fired, the torts year wrapped up, and it wasn't really a great year. There was a game the Canucks were playing against the Anaheim Ducks where they were losing, and if the Vancouver Canucks lost this game, they would have been out of the playoffs and would have had no mathematical chance of getting back into the playoffs, no matter how many games they won. Once the third period started counting down, the Vancouver Canucks were down in the scoreboard, the Canucks would have been eliminated from the playoffs once the game was over, the crowd started chanting, Fire Gillis, and that was what happened. It was very interesting to watch. Gillis was fired right after. Enter Jim Benning, the guy who is coming over from the Boston Bruins management team and taking over the Vancouver Canucks. He eventually 
fed in to the Ryan Kessler trade requests and traded him to one of Anaheim, Chicago, or Pittsburgh. In this case, it was Anaheim, and the Vancouver Canucks got a package that wasn't really all too great. It was Ryan Kessler and a 2015 third for a first-round pick in 2014, Lucas Spiza, Nick Benino, and a 2014 third-round pick, which the Canucks immediately flipped over to New York in exchange for Derek Dorsett. Now, Dorsett was honestly really good with the Vancouver Canucks before he was forced to retire, so I'm not going to really talk about that. But Kessler for Spiza, Benino, and a first. The first ended up becoming Jared McCann, who got traded eventually, and he's now on Pittsburgh. We talked about the revitalization of Jared McCann's career a little bit earlier. But Lucas Spiza and Nick Benino. Oh, boy. Nick Benino is a guy whose skating never really allowed him to become amazing with the Vancouver Canucks, and Lucas Pisa, towards the end of his tenure here, was just really, really not great. A lot of these other assets that the Vancouver Canucks were able to get were also flipped as well. Jared McCann was eventually traded with a few other things for Eric Goodbranson, and the Vancouver Canucks used some of these other draft picks they got to get William Lockwood and Cole Candela. Nick Benino was traded along with some other stuff for Brandon Sutter, and now we have ourselves a trade tree that looks like this. Now, if you swap Eric Goodbranson out for Tanner Pearson, this all of a sudden looks much better. Ryan Kessler, a third, Bieksa, Forsling, a second, and a fourth in exchange for Tanner Pearson. Lucas Pisa, who eventually did just get picked up by the Vegas Golden Knights, so he's gone now. Brandon Sutter, who is still here, Derek Dorsett, who had to retire, William Lockwood, who's in the system, and Cole Candela, who the Canucks don't even have the rights to anymore. It doesn't really look all too great, aside from that Tanner Pearson. If it wasn't for Tanner Pearson, this trade would have looked much, much, much worse. Kessler, a third, BX, a Forsling, a second, and a fourth is a lot of value, especially considering that Ryan Kessler was still seen as a very, very good NHL player at the time he was traded. He was a top Selkie candidate after when he was playing with the Anaheim Ducks. And playing with the Ducks, Ryan Kessler still was able to get 47, 53, 58 points in the next few years. Sure, he was forced to pretty much never play hockey again now, but at the same time, Kessler was a very, very good player at the time of the deal. So, there's no real winner here, if I'm gonna be honest. Sure, the Ducks had a few good years out of Kessler, but what did they really accomplish with that? Sure, the Vancouver Canucks traded Kessler and a whole bunch of other stuff for good Branson, Spiza, and Sutter, but good Branson turned into Pearson. Lockwood is looking like a good NHL prospect. Sure, Derek Dorsett is out, but the Canucks still have a few more years to develop with these prospects. It's not really a win-win situation for anybody, especially considering the fact that Jared McCann, the number one prospect in the deal, is now doing things with the team that he wasn't even traded to in Florida, and he's now in Pittsburgh, but it kind of speaks volumes to how weird NHL trade trees can become, and when you have big players of big star power, you don't necessarily get yourself the best of the deal once all is said and done six years down the line. Back when I made the video initially talking about the Kessler trade in 2018, it wasn't really looking all too great because Erica Branson was on there, and Kessler was still playing, and from that perspective just two years ago, it looked like the Canucks had lost. But now, Kessler is pretty much out of the game. Kevin BX is out of the game, too. The Kess and Juice podcast is awesome. Those draft picks turned into other things. Gustav Forsling is with the Blackhawks. That was because of the Adam Clendenning thing, FYI. But at least we still have some of these other assets. Sutter, Pearson, and Lockwood. Yeah, it's really not looking all too great now, isn't it? A lot of people will say, though, that the Vancouver Canucks, from the moment Kessler requested a trade, were doomed. Because of the fact that Kessler only really wanted to go to Pittsburgh, Anaheim, or Chicago. Three teams that were really good, but three teams that were kind of strapped for cap. Three teams that, because they're really good, of course they're not going to have some extra money to use up on a really good two-way center. The Anaheim deal for Benino and Spiza was one of the only real options the Vancouver Canucks had when it came to trading Kessler, and because Jim Benning was the new guy in town, he had no real reason to keep him, especially since he wanted to play elsewhere. So the Canucks were kind of doomed from the moment he asked for a trade, 
And now we're taking a look at it six years later and saying, yeah, there wasn't really any legitimate winner out of any of these teams that were involved. And it's just kind of unfortunate to see it that way. So I hope you enjoyed this video, Search Without Trolls 99. And bye.